Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the August 14, 2014 meeting of the Raleigh Astronomy Club. Thank you for joining us tonight. Okay, so here we go. Tonight we have uh, one of our co-chairs, Mike Keith, uh, to speak about uh, astronomy apps on or astronomy apps and websites for um, tablets and smartphones. Mike started back in 2007, not too long or before I started. And uh, I started out with a Dobsonian. You started out with Dobsonian? No, uh, club loaners. Club loaners, okay. So, yeah, that's another thing to keep in mind. Like one of the members talked about the Lunar Scope uh, program. But anyway, get back to Mike. Um, so, yeah, Mike's been with the club since 2007. I've been to, with the club 2007. This is all about Mike, but we'll talk about these two. And <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, I started, with, well, I started out with uh, Lunar Scopes and then he finally made a decision to go with a 8 inch SCT. 8 inch SCT, and that was a regular uh, visual setting circles, yeah. other eyes, SCT. You remember it very well. Yeah, I remember it too because uh, unlike him, I went down the expensive slippery slope of imaging mostly. And every time um, my camera was looking through my telescope, I had no telescope to look through. So thankfully, uh, Mike was uh, allowed me to look through his 8 inch. Since yeah. then, he's upgraded to a larger uh, Celestron 11 inch um, telescope and tradition continues. Yes. So if I can, so, well, not mine, but while the camera hogs mine. So yeah. anyway, but you know, maybe you may hit the slippery slope going to imaging. You've already dabbled in uh, video astronomy, right? Video astronomy, yeah. Video astronomy. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, that's the background on uh, Mike. So here, here I have a microphone. So if you have any questions, I'll be sitting down here and I'll try to turn my attention toward the audience a little bit. So you raise your hand, I can hand you to Mike, and you can ask a question. So, with that said, Mike, take it away. Astronomy apps and websites for smartphones and tablets. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, just a little housekeeping on that end because we are streaming these now and capturing them for all po posterity. Uh, we would like if you could kind of raise your hand when you have a question, and we'll get you the mic just so we make sure that uh, the uh, uh, audience after the fact can hear the question. So. Uh, with that, we'll just kind of get started. Um, I'm going to cover, you know, various apps. I've tried to group them by category. So, uh, were they kind of, you know, planetarium or related to charts? Uh, they could have been planning tools. Um, could be some just general information, and then the all important uh, weather-related tools. Um, wherever possible, I, I had an app on here that would allow me to stream whatever was showing on my uh, iPad to the uh, laptop, but unfortunately between the way the, uh, uh, the museum handles its Wi-Fi and everything, they, they, they can't seem to connect to each other. So I'll, I've got screenshots of things, uh, and if at later time during the break anyone wants to see anything, please come and see me. Um, and again, this is by no means an exhaustive list. Uh, I pulled a couple people, actually I pulled everybody, some people responded, so I tried to get a wide range. Um, a lot of my knowledge from this area has come from cloudynights.com, so again, not all encompassing by any means, uh, just really more my experience. So we'll jump into the kind of planetarium and uh, charts. And I'd, I'd have to say, I think Sky Safari is one of the most, most, most popular. Um, and in that case, um, it can go from a very cheap version, inexpensive I should say, to a fully loaded version that'll control your telescope, has you know 400,000 stars, uh, you name it. Uh, it's got a zoomable um, a map so you can you know, kind of jump in, uh, zoom into planets, uh, you know, clusters, you name it. Uh, you can actually use the built-in GPS to um, uh, f help you find objects between the GPS and the, uh, I guess, a accelerate, accelerometer or whatever. Uh, but you can point it up to the sky, put in a, uh, a, a target, and literally it will tell you how far to move the tablet. It's almost like built-in digital setting circles. So uh, it's a pretty cool app. It'll go into a night vision mode. Um, the higher end versions will actually replace uh, your um, 
uh, if you've got a go-to mount, it'll replace your uh, hand controller, so you can do everything uh, from your uh, iPad or other Android device. Again, it is on Apple, so iOS stands for Apple, and then obviously the Androids. Uh, it's got information on any object you touch. You click on it, and it will uh, pull up information. Uh, you can also kind of zoom forward and backwards in time uh, to get various different dates. Uh, I found it really, really useful when uh, you know, even at public observing sessions, and I want to find out, oh my gosh, I've got this galaxy in here. How far is it away? It'll tell you. It'll show you the positions of the, of the moons of Saturn or Jupiter. Uh, so it's a really, really, really cool uh, app that allows you to do quite a bit for a cheap price, uh, and then obviously it goes up. Uh, it does also work wirelessly um, with uh, Orion mounts, Celestron mounts. Um, in fact, Celestrons, they have something called SkyQ. Uh, Sky Safari sells something called SkyFi, and I can't remember Orion's version. They all use a wireless uh, piece, and then Orion and Celestron literally are using a uh, an off-branded or a kind of a, their own self-branded version of Sky Safari, but it's Sky Safari just under someone else's name. Yes, Brian. Yeah, so, Mike, uh, uh, it says up there you Control your telescope. You already said that, of course. Uh, does, that, does that include that for both the tablet and the phone? Yep. So you can do it. You can do it with your phone. Interesting. All right. Thank you. And you can plug it in with a wire, or you can do it wirelessly with the with the additional. Uh, I guess it's a it creates a hotspot uh, with a little with an adapter. So Mobile Observatory, this is uh, an Android only. Um, Ian actually put me onto this, and this looks super, super feature rich. Um, so zoomable, just like Sky uh, Fi, uh, interactive top down uh, views of the solar system, uh, a full calendar of celestial events. What I thought was really cool, you can actually push that calendar to your phone and your tablets. Uh, own calendar so it can remind you and set alarms of hey there's an eclipse or you know uh, uh, Titan is going to or actually not Titan but you know you, we're gonna have a double transit uh, of uh, Galilean moons uh, very cool time you select an object it'll actually, an object will actually give you in addition to lots of information about that object it'll tell you its rise and set times as well as transit times um, it'll display a position, uh, basically your RA and, and declination, as well as the alt and azimuth of various objects, a lot like what Stellarium does. Um, it'll tell you the twilight times, uh, length of days. Uh, very, very, very cool um, application. I've only seen demos of it, uh, but like I said, uh, I know Ian uh, uses it, and he had um, quite a lot to say of it. There, it's very, very feature rich. I couldn't even get most of it on the screen. Uh, so again, it's kind of like you start with this top section here, um, kind of, and you can go into any one of these different menus, and then depending upon which menu you select, uh, you'll drop down. Uh, so that is really, really cool. The only thing I couldn't find is whether or not it had a night vision mode. I don't know if anyone's got Mobile Observatory uh, and can comment whether or not it's got a night mode. Yes, last time I remember it does. Uh, I got this uh, quite a while back, and um, the guy who uh, made this, he made a really cool uh, solar system, which we as well, but the same guy made this uh, little observatory app, and um, I can say this, that it has come a long way. He keeps on adding lots and lots of stuff, so Mike's not getting it very rich. If only they would make it for uh, iPad. <laughs> but he doesn't. Um, and, and one thing I'll note is where, uh, so it, as part of the topics, uh, I'll try and let you know exactly what platforms these things are on uh, and if there's a, a similar version, uh, if it's not in here. So um, Starwalk is another one. I think this is a very, very popular one um, and available on most of the formats. So it'll work on your uh, Apple device, Android, Kindle, and Windows Phone. Um, you know, it's got many of the same features uh, as uh, the other two, 
but what I really, really like about this one, and I know uh, Sky Safari does not have it. I don't know if uh, Mobile Observatory does. But when you use your tablet and, and you'll hold it up, it'll do something called augmented reality. It will actually kind of put the background sky. Uh, so it uses your camera, takes the feed from the camera, and overlays uh, the basically the planetarium software on top of it. So if you want to get the moon, you can actually see get the glare from the moon and try and line it up here. Yes, Anne. Okay, so the two ninety nine, if it is that like per instance of it, or is it you, once you order it, you already have it? You've got it. Oh, okay. And at most of them, you'll get some upgrades up to a point. Uh, although I've, you know, Sky Safari, I noticed when you upgraded from version three to version four, there was a charge. But a lot of times, definitely minor versions are always included for free. A quick question on Starwalk. So does that also include uh, scope control and or an observer, observing log? Uh, with, uh, with Starwalk, no. I don't believe it's got scope control at all. So i got a question from yeah. Mike. I have both of these because I had this first. I had both of these. I have Starwalk and Sky Safari. Uh, Starwalk is, is, is good if you're out. Yeah, definitely. It's a very cool app. Um, this one is a free guide. Um, this is nowhere near as feature rich as some of the other ones. It's called Jupiter Guide. Um, it's free for uh, iOS, so on your Apple. There is a similar Android app called uh, Jupyter Simulator, but it's very straightforward, and it basically tells you uh, which of Jupiter's moons are where. Uh, you can actually change it so you'll flip between, um, you know, a, a basically a you know Newtonian view. You can flip it right side, uh, you know, basically upside down and right to left or vice versa, so you can mimic the view that you're getting from your scope. Uh, you can also click on the detail, and then it'll give you rise, set, and transit times uh, for the next four, I think three or four transits, three transits of, uh, I take that back, just the transit time of Jupiter, uh, so you can kind of plan when are we going to be able to see the great red spot. Um, you can also kind of go backwards and forwards in time. Uh, with that, so um, you know, it's it's a very quick, easy way to pull up the information on Jupiter. Uh, if you're looking at it, you can definitely get the same information on these other apps. Uh, this is just a really quick and dirty way to do it, uh, and it's just you know rock solid. Um, Moon Globe is if you are into any sort of lunar observing, this is a phenomenal app. Um, free on iOS device. Uh, I have not seen the uh, Android app in motion or in practice, uh, but the reviews were very similar. And this is a great moon atlas. Um, you can find objects. Um, you can uh, move forward and backwards in time to see what the illumination is going to be, where the terminator is going to show up. Um, you can you know, basically say, show me a live mode. It'll give you the Terminator where it is. You can turn the Terminator off. You can slide back and forth. It's really, really in-depth. Uh, allows you to do lots and lots of cool things. Um, the database is pretty uh, exhaustive. Um, I, I lost count at how many things were in there. You can't zoom too, too much, but uh, pretty much you're going to be able to zoom to any level of detail you're going to get on your scope. Uh, and it's uh, uh, pretty neat. I'm going to see if I can pull it up here uh, just for folks to see. So I'm zoomed in quite a bit, and I can zoom out. I had it on Rupus Recta, and you can see here I can just, when I can spin the, the globe around, and I can change the illumination all I want. I can turn it upside down, You go to whatever spot. So... Uh, pretty neat um, thing to play with. I've spent many an hour sitting in a camp chair uh, with binoculars and literally just having this in my lap and <laughs> with binoculars just checking out stuff on the moon. Uh, and it is, it is really, really cool. Um, 
Again, it's free. Yeah. Pause it. Uh, that is the Android app. Yeah. Uh, Tri Atlas uh, is, I don't know if anyone's ever heard of, of Tri Atlas. They have three versions on the web. Uh, so this is web as well as iOS. And on the web, you can go uh, into three levels of detail. Uh, the third level, uh, which I guess is basically, the, I'll call it Class C. I believe there are 600 pages in that atlas. So think of, you know, if you've got a pocket sky atlas or something like that with, what, 70 pages, 80 pages, this thing's got over 600. Uh, goes very, very detailed. And in this one, you've got uh, basically version C on the smartphone. Um, and you start up with basically kind of an all sky overlay. Uh, it can be a little hard to read sometimes. So on a smartphone, kind of tough. On an iPad, it's a little bit better, but you basically click on the, uh, the option, and now you'll get to that, uh, uh, part, excuse me, that part on the uh, atlas, and then you'll be able to zoom in. Uh, so it's actually pretty neat. Uh, I was shocked at the, um, that it really didn't take up that much space, but it basically kind of looks like this. You've got your atlas up front. Uh, you have to kind of... <laughs> You can zoom in a little bit, uh, but let's say I wanted to go to you know, something in Pegasus. So I clicked on Pegasus, and then I can really zoom in. Uh, I want to say it goes down to, I believe, 13th magnitude stars, uh, maybe 14th magnitude stars. So th it's, there's quite a lot of information. Uh, so if you want to go real deep but don't feel like carrying a binder uh, of 600 pages um, of you know, laminated <laughs> charts. Uh, this is a really good option. And then uh, it also, you can actually control the, um, um, the dimming. So you can make it dim or bright, and you can turn it into a kind of red, and even that, you can adjust it. So um, great way to preserve your night vision uh, in, in this mode. Just one comment, I have it. Um, just one comment I have as well. What I really like about it is that Overlay, it's all divided into pages, like you can see on a regular star map. And then all you have to do is just tap that page, and it's yeah. kind of drills down. So the drill down and drill up is really nice. Yeah. Very nice. And then you just kind of flick. Yeah, uh, exactly. You can actually then go from page to page by, you know, flicking. So it's it's literally a virtual, you know, paper atlas. Right. All right. So that's all I had on the. Um, the atlases and the planning software. I mean, I know there's a lot of other. I know you can get Stellarium on the uh, on 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 the devices, but uh, it's primarily a desktop. So I really wanted to stay away from the desktops. These were things that uh, I think primarily were either uh, for a in uh, a you know, tablet or a smartphone uh, and websites that you could use your tablet or smartphone. So we'll jump into the planning tools. Uh, Observer Pro. Um, I think is one of my uh, favorite apps, and it's a little pricey. Uh, it, it's surprising how much you know. We'll, as astronomers, we'll drop five hundred dollars easily on an eyepiece. At least some astronomers will. Uh, yeah, you can do that, and you know, think really, you know, fifty bucks, sixty bucks easily for some software program on your laptop. But when it comes to apps, you know, two dollars, three dollars, come on. Frank. Go back to that live screen for a second. I'm taking notes. Uh, can we do that during the break? I just don't want to get um, uh, pulled in. But so uh, Observer Pro, expensive kind of as apps go. But what is one of the coolest things is, and you can see it on, on this particular slide, um, you get to paint your own horizon. So you use your device and um, literally. I'm not going to do my home, um, but you know, if I was at Staunton River, I can actually map the local horizon, and it goes into here. I turn it, and now I literally well, it wants me to calibrate it. Come on. All right. Well, you literally would hold it up here. Now I don't know. Come on. Okay. So. You take it here and you start mapping the trees or whatever, and it'll basically create um, this horizon. And 
at that point, it will know based upon the internal GPS, the compass, and the kind of the accelerometer or whatever, how you've tilted it, it will then tell you uh, what objects are visible or not visible. You've got the green, um, uh, basically the green uh, graph or the green line is going to tell you when it's visible uh, and when the, uh, they, they tries to do this weird kind of uh, comparison of contrast, how bright it's going to be, you know, when it's good, when it's not good, uh, that sort of thing. So it's going to tell you exactly, um, you know, when it's visible from your location. The orange line is basically giving you rise and set times. Uh, so you can see it definitely rises in this scenario. It rises before um, the uh, it gets dark. So you can see the green line doesn't even come up here because it's not worth looking at in the middle of the day. Um, and you can jump forward in time. You can see what it's how good it's going to be, um, you know, tonight, tomorrow, uh, and you can have multiple sites. So uh, I know in in my neighborhood I've got some very poorly placed trees. I'm still waiting on Doug to uh, get me some dynamite uh, to take out the rest of those trees. Um, I'll, ki I'll kidding, kidding, kidding. Uh, so what it allows me to do is I can find exactly when I want to look at an object. When is um, you know the, the the wild duck cluster going to be placed well in between that tree and that peak of that house? I'm going to be able to see it. So it gives you a lot of information. Um, it, it'll actually tell you about a little bit about the objects, so you can tap them. You can set up favorites. You can see what are the most popular ones. Although I doubt whether that's really kind of a live favorites, because I don't think there's a lot of kind of uh, communication uh, between the end users and some kind of central database. So I think it picks the most popular ones by default based upon what time of year it is. Um, and you can add, so as like I said, you can add them to your favorites. You can mark them as you've observed them. Um, great app, but definitely kind of missing. I mean, it would be a fantastic app if there was a way to log your observations, or even better, link it with an audio uh, clip or something like that. But really, really cool um, app. Um, and again, a little steep as, as uh, apps go, but uh, definitely great. And it also has a, uh, a night mode. Uh, by the way, that one is one that is definitely worth, we can show it off uh, later on. Hopefully most everyone is familiar with Tonight's Sky. This is a web-based uh, version only. It is free, but it allows you to select uh, and input lots of information about uh, where you are, how you want to observe, similar to um, Observer Pro. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily give you the ability to really map out your horizon. But in this case, we can set up certain dates. Uh, we can select what we want to observe. Uh, so we want to select, select the magnitude. Um, I would caution you about selecting double stars and even some of the clusters because, man, you are going to get a lot. Um, but you can plug in whatever information you want, when you're going to when you're going to start observing, uh, and for how long, uh, and it just tries to calculate um, what is in the night sky. You then get a complete list of objects that meet uh, your uh, criteria. You can set them up however you want. If you wanted to learn more about them, uh, you can click this little icon for uh, research and uh, it'll tell you a little bit more about the objects. But once you're done selecting, um, you can then, whoops, sorry, you can then scroll all the way down. And um, how, how do you want the plan to be formatted? Um, you know, you can give it a whole bunch of information, even export it. Uh, so we'll do the, the times, uh, sort by, uh, that sort of thing. And um, in this case, it's going to give me a white background, I believe. Uh, just generate the observing plan, and now you've got a um, nice, easy to print out uh, log. Uh, again, it's given me for each object. I asked it to give me all kinds of, uh, you know, coordinates and things like that. So you can really get a decent uh, log built out of this. It's not, you know, really feature rich. 
but it'll definitely get you in the ballpark to plan what you want to do. Uh, and uh, it, it works pretty well, at least I, I'm, I'm happy with how it works on an iPad. Uh, the iPhone's a little bit too small uh, to download this, so you can basically either, if you've got wireless where you're observing, you can get it, um, or you can do it at home and then basically keep that page cached uh, on your, um, your device. And just looking at the El Azimuth uh, readings, that, that could be something very handy, especially for a beginner with a Dobsonian telescope and a couple of and maybe a, a, drug, a pair of drugstore protractors. Mm -hmm. And uh, you uh, or just draw it out uh, with a pointer, uh, line it up with a magnetic compass, uh, or line it up with one su uh, subject, and you got the whole night laid out oh, yeah. with several, uh, several objects uh, without having to worry about your battery dying. Just keep enough coffee. Exactly. Yeah. No, it does a, it does a great job. And uh, I've seen some great printable um, templates. How's this? Is this better? Okay. Sorry about that. All right. Um, but yeah, and you know, a lot of Dobsonians have these templates that you can print out uh, and uh, put on your Dob base. So once you've aligned it to the the celestial nor north pole, you've got your uh, your azimuth um, markings. Oh, what was that? So these are formatted uh, in that when you hit print, uh, it's going to, it's not going to overrun margins or anything like that. It pretty much is set to print out an, on an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper or multiple eight and eleven, uh, eight and eleven and a half sheets of paper. Eight, eight and a half and eleven. Thank you. Whew, that's a mouthful. Is this or any of the other ones you've covered? Control your telescope? Uh, so on this one, no. So the only one so far that will control your telescope uh, is Sky Safari and I believe Mobile uh, Observatory. Will that control your scope? I don't think so. Uh, or at least I haven't explored it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sky Safari. That was the first one we talked about. Um, so if you're ever looking to find certain information on uh, particular objects, uh, this particular website, uh, the NGC uh, and uh, the uh, IC Project website, it's got a wealth of information. Um, I've actually taken a lot of the uh, pictures that they, they'll provide here, and I've made an Excel spreadsheet with and embedded the pictures in the Excel spreadsheet. So I can then um, kind of figure out, okay, what have I seen? What haven't I seen? Um, and again, with the iPad, I can bring that Excel spreadsheet into its numbers uh, piece. It allows me to uh, basically have my list of observing items or, or objects and have a little picture. Uh, but it's a great tool to get information. Uh, they, most objects uh, have information from different observers using different size telescopes. The most common are some big daubs and a 13-inch daub and then some 8-inch um, uh, scopes as well. Uh, but it'll kind of give you a flavor of what that object is. Uh, so pretty good for uh, consulting and, and getting information on. Um, unfortunately, though, it, it's on a website. There isn't an app version on it. So uh, you pretty much have to be uh, have an internet connection to use it in the field. Uh, but a great source of information. And it's free. Has anyone else, by the way, show of hands, has anyone else used this before? Good, good. Information, I thought. Um, Deluxe Moon, great little planning app, but man, is it hokey. <laughs> uh, this is, I mean, 
I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up. Even the music that it plays in the background, um, when it's going, it just, eh. I, I want, I, I, I want to hate it. I really do. Um, because it's, first of all, it's built around astrology. I know that's a four-letter word uh, amongst us here, but it, um, yeah, so. It's got this funky, you know, new wave, uh, zen music, but it really gives us a lot of good information. I mean, anytime we're talking about, okay, is this going to be a good observing night? Anytime we're doing planning on setting up observing times uh, or, or sessions, it's great because it gives you all sorts of information in, in a whole bunch of different formats. You can look at it by, you know, just by day. Uh, it'll tell you rise and set times. Um, you can then go into, um, you know, you can see the calendar phase, uh, you know, for, for basically each day. Um, it'll tell you which zodiac sign the moon is in. Um, yeah, not my favorite, but again, really hokey. Uh, it'll give you a graphical representation of the moon's illumination uh, on on various count on various dates. So. It, it actually gives you a lot of great information. I just, I'm not crazy about why they put it together, but it's really good information. Um, so it does have uh, night vision. Uh, obviously, you can change your uh, date and time. Uh, it actually has some great eclipse information. Uh, and, you know, just all around, just a solid, good little um, app. For instance, that uh, moon crescent phase mm -hmm. locator, Say if it's like a one-day lunar crescent, does it tell you whether you can see it or not? The reason I yeah. ask that is if the moon is progressing towards the south, that is south of due west line, say, for uh -huh. instance, so just after new moon, it's very difficult to see opposed to when the moon is the furthest to the north or where it sits in the west northwest where it's very easier to see a one day lunar crescent that also can depend on the exact time of day that the moon actually becomes new. Yeah, exactly. I have a certain number of hours, usually uh, twenty to twenty four hours where you can see it all with even binoculars. Yeah, you definitely need to get uh, you, you need to get that moon away from the sun. Uh, to see it. There is no visibility here, but with that information you should be able to tell uh, okay, it's it's this far illuminated or it's these many days into its cycle uh, and you can you can find that out. Um, so it's a really good planning tool, just stay away from the, uh, the zodiac piece. <laughs> um, any comet hunters out here? Raise your hand. Okay, and I knew, I knew there's one. Um, Skyhound, actually, it's it's based on uh, an application, a computer-based app called SkyTools, uh, which is not free, but following this link, um, you can actually get to... Um, I should have it open here somewhere. There it is. Um, you can get to the, the, the place where it's going to give you lots of good information about comets for the given month. So... You know, kind of a new section up top uh, with hyperlinks as needed. Uh, but then it goes in and tells you kind of, um, you know, each of these comets, it'll give you certain information as to visibility, magnitude, uh, throughout the times of the month, but also from your latitude. Is it going to be visible? Is it not going to be visible? So uh, if you're planning on doing any comet hunting, this is just a nice consolidated place where uh, you can go to get information. Uh, I also like that they'll give you finder charts. So you click on the hyperlink uh, and it'll print out a nice little finder chart for you. Uh, so again, you can save this uh, as a PDF file on, again, not very good for a smartphone, uh, much better on a tablet, but you can save this uh, as a PDF and incorporate it into your library features of your tablet and then you've got it uh, for reference out in the field. Uh, so it's, and I've really had good luck uh, looking at comments with um, this information. I really have not been steered wrong um, with the uh, is it ephemeris information or the, uh, the date. So 
Um, so Mark, I don't know if you've ever had a you know thumbs up, thumbs down on. I I looked at it. <laughs> so you've looked at it, but never used it. Well. Yeah, I, I've looked at it over the years, but you know I kind of prefer the, uh, the Japanese one by Fujita. I don't know about that one. We'll have to add an appendix to. Okay, come on, go back. No, we don't want to see that. Okay. So for you comment hunters out there, uh, pretty good free uh, option here. So now we'll jump into some very just generic uh, or general information tools. Um, dark sky meter, and man, I really wish I had that uh, app going where you could see it. Um, this is a very cheap alternative to one of uh, those uh, dark uh, or those uh, sky quality uh, meters. Thank you. Um, it only works on iPhone 4S and higher. And please note, iPhone, not even the iPad. Basically, the developer has put this together and he's able to get some pretty good uh, you know, tuning of his software because Apple uses a very consistent camera in their, um, their, their basic iPhone and higher. Um, he's talked about trying to develop a similar app for uh, Android devices, the problem is the hardware runs the gamut uh, as far as sensitivity. So it's very hard um, to get that uh, set up. So the premise behind this is you literally you take the device, um, you basically put it in your pocket or put it somewhere, and you take a dark exposure. Literally, you press dark, and it'll start to measure and kind of tries to calibrate the darkness. And then you hold up your iPhone to the sky and then measure. Um, the uh, the brightness and what I really like is um, it's I've noticed that it's fairly consistent uh, so I know a couple other members have these so I know Doug has taken some measurements and ours have usually been within um, you know ten one hundredths uh, of, of the reading I know Greg has got one and his readings have been similar so it allows us to track some of this information. You can report it. They have a database of information uh, that is free to the public. Uh, so it's it's good, and it allows you to kind of do your own testing. Um, it is not the same caliber and quality as the dedicated units. That's you know that, that's without question. I will say one bug the app has in it, or a bit annoying to me, is that it seems that every time he updates the uh, app. Wipes your data out. I don't like that. Ooh, I did not notice that. At least the uh, wipe my data out. The <laughs> thing is, it's, it's there, but it's just it's visible. I can't, I can't make it anonymous. Yeah. If you go into the website, though, because it, 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 uses, it uses your readings and an overlay on Google Maps, you can always go. I mean, that, that's, that's saved. So if you've submitted. Uh, the other thing that's really neat is it even has like a weather app. So you click on the menu button, and it'll give you a, a weather forecast. Uh, I believe, it, and we'll talk a little bit more about this, I believe it uses one of the um, uh, websites that I'll talk about for that weather option. Even uh, Observer Pro can do, do some of the weather as well. Uh, so I don't know. I haven't seen it. I only saw a reference to it. But there is a similar Android app called Loss of the Night. Um, I don't know how good it is. Uh, so yes. Oh. I think that loss of the night is a little different in that you look at the zenith and you estimate what you can see. I don't think it uses the point. Okay. Um, and so that's distributed by a guy in Germany. Um, and they're doing a lot of public outreach with that, mm -hmm. which I think was the reason they found. But again, it doesn't use the camera. I think it's, it's more like the globe at night project where you look at the zenith and decide what you can see. Exactly. Very good. Um, but again, a very cool app uh, if you've got an iPhone. Um, I know there's lots of information on uh, finding the International Space Station out there. Uh, but I have to say, I was really happy with this one. Uh, the price is obviously right. Uh, it's free. Um, I couldn't find a similar version that kind of did everything that this one did on um, uh, Android, but you know, 
it's pretty straightforward. It provides an overlay of where the IIS is on a map. Um, so again, it's not letting me. Uh, it's not letting me uh, zoom in or out, but it'll provide you that map. But then uh, it'll actually kind of give you a forecast. So um, we've got some forecasts up here that are all one star, so they're not going to be very bright. Um, but when you click on one of these, it'll actually, as you move your uh, device, it'll actually help you uh, figure out where exactly it's going to be. You know, is it going to be in the north? Is it going to be above this elevation? So you can almost kind of follow it and help you anticipate it. Uh, it'll even set an alarm for you. Uh, and literally, it'll, it'll tell you, hey, it's coming. Uh, the problem, I think, with the, or the one drawback with this is the forecasts only go out a certain amount of time. So if you want to say, oh, uh, I think, Nick, let me see what it is all of next month, it won't do that. I think it goes out 10 days or something like that. Uh, like in, in this case, I can only go out to August 20th. Um, so it is, uh, it, it is pretty neat. Uh, you can configure some things as well as you know, minimum peak ele elevation um, and what times of days. And also, you can set it to only tell you about nighttime ones you'll be able to see. We've got a question back there. ISS detector for Android. Okay, cool. All right. uh, Heavens Above, I think, a great website. Um, I'm sure many people have, have used this. Uh, gives you a lot of the same information uh, that the IIS uh, spotter will do, but you can program countless number of um, satellites Iridium uh, flares, you name it. The uh, why can't I recall the name of the Chinese space station? Whatever Mark said. Uh, <laughs> Tian Tiangong. Um, so yeah, and uh, right there. So you know, it's it's a great uh, site. Uh, I wanted included. It. It's not the best using on a smartphone or a tablet. Um, it's not configured to be an adaptive. Um, Interface, but nonetheless, you know, it, it's a great uh, tool to have uh, for spotting all kinds of things. Especially, I love making sure we've got an iridium flare on an observing night. Yeah, I have to second you on that. That's a great uh, website to go to. There's so much information on there. Especially, like, if you just need some basic astronomy stuff to, to email people who have questions and stuff, you can give them a link to the page or you can send the uh, data right out to them and everything. It's, it's good. On the IIS spotter, the app will, the device will actually uh, go off. But that's when, the app, right? Yes, the app, yeah. Yeah, so this uh, website, it'll do that uh, HQ spot station by NASA, and um, it'll do the same thing. But you know, the only um, constraint is that it will email you notification, but it only does it that day. Mm -hmm. so, And I'll mention this before, uh, also kind of at the end. Um, if anyone's got some other great sites uh, they like th that they would like to um, post here, uh, I think if we should have the comments open and available on the YouTube video uh, for this piece. So feel free if you've got a, a you know, website you, th you think or an app should be added to this, uh, please feel free to post that in the comments. Um, I really like uh, this, X, it's called Exoplanet. There's a similar device for the Android. It's not by the same developer, but it's got the same name. Uh, and I know that can be confusing. Uh, but it is free for the iOS platform. Um, this is really neat. In fact, I get notifications all the time. Another planet has been discovered. 
So um, it'll give you all kinds of physical information uh, about the actual exoplanet and their host stars. Um, it actually gives you a three-dimensional view of our Milky Way, and you can kind of pan through it and move around. And to me, I'm just blown away when I see just the small little spots in our Milky Way where we've actually discovered planets, because that's the only place we've been looking. Blows me away. Um, you can use it. You can zoom into any one of the uh, planetary systems. Actually, zoom in. It'll give you all sorts of information as you're zooming in. How many AU's away you are, uh, and, and so forth. And um, it even has kind of an augmented reality uh, where you can point uh, in, in that particular feature. You can actually point your device to the uh, sky, and it'll at least tell you the star, or at least get you kind of close to what star it's around if it's uh, visible at the time. Uh, but it's a really neat app, um, and the fact that you can actually have it configured that the app will kind of just you know, give you an alarm uh, or put, uh, do a push notification when anything new is discovered. Um, so it's, it is a great um, uh, little app. And then last but not least, uh, weather-related. Um, the, most of these are, if anyone has ever seen when we do some of our public observing, uh, I try and I have got this Excel sheet that we call the RACOBS model. And all it is, it's, just, it's not really doing any modeling per se, it's just getting all this data and putting it in one uh, you know, uh, easy spot for everyone to look at and then make the judgment call. Uh, so we use uh, this information. Uh, this is CalSky. Uh, it's free. It's sourced out of Germany, uh, and I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with uh, how uh, accurate it is. Um, I've got it up and running in the background here. Sorry, we won't do that. Come on. So, for example, here is. The most recent one uh, for Raleigh. It'll pull it up. You can also subscribe to their list for all sorts of information on, uh, you know, weather balloons. Uh, you know, when the IS is coming. Um, what I like about this is it it's all on one page, and it gives you seven days worth of forecasts, and you read it as follows. You've basically got the transparency. Uh, along the top. You, if you hover over, it'll give you kind of an indicator. Um, but white uh, in the top means too cloudy to, uh, to forecast. If kind of this grayish means it's not great. Then you go to kind of a, a blue and then a very dark blue. Uh, so it gives you four levels of transparency. Um, the next line, you can kind of see it here. Uh, you can see definitely here. Uh, this is the seeing. The larger the icons, the basically the worse the seeing. So we've got some great seeing Tuesday night, <laughs> uh, horrible seeing, uh, you know, tonight, and uh, we hopefully this changes for our um, public observing session tomorrow. Uh, then uh, you do have kind of on the bottom, it does a bit of forecasting of the amount of humidity you're going to get. Um, the red line indicates the weather, uh, it's in Celsius, and then the green line uh, plots uh, wind speed, uh, and that, I believe, is, I don't know if it's in knots or kilometers, um, kilometers. Uh, and you can, it'll tell you, it'll, you, you can hide the, the, the moon's uh, information. Uh, if I click go, it'll do it. Um, So we, we hit the moon. I'm assuming this is lightning. Um, it doesn't actually tell us what it is. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, or it just could be that it's very turbulent atmosphere. Not really sure. Uh, but I found this is actually a pretty accurate uh, um, representation. Um, I found at least uh, over the kind of the three day or two day, it's more accurate than clear sky clock. At least that's been my experience. Um, so it's it's a it's a great um, uh, website to check out. Um, so that's CalSky. Obviously, clear sky chart. I think that is the de facto standard that you know most astronomers go to. Um, this one obviously is based out of uh, Canada. Um, 
can't remember the guy's first name. Starts with an A, but it's obviously there. Uh, they do have various web-based. So it's web-based, but you can also get various apps that read this information. Uh, obviously, forecasts many of the same things. You've got your cloud cover, transparency, seeing, wind, humidity, temperature, uh, and so forth. And it does it over the next uh, 48 hours. So uh, very much, uh, I think, uh, anyone that has ever looked for astronomy weather, I think that's the first one that you get to. Uh, what I also like about Clear Sky uh, Chart is uh, when you click on a particular uh, location, it will also give you the uh, light pollution measurement. Although I think that might be a little outdated, but uh, it does give you uh, that information. Uh, Skippy Sky, um, it's just fun to say. Um, it is web-based. I wish they had an app. Um, but this one will give you... He does. Ah, oh, Android only. Okay, so there's an Android app. Uh, I believe um, there is an app for Android only, and I think it's not in the Play Store, but I think you can go to that uh, web URL, and I think you can download it directly. From the okay, very good. Um, I really like this one. It's it's an overview. Uh, it goes out five days. Um, and there are a whole bunch of different ways that you can actually look at uh, the information. So here's Skippy Sky. Uh, there's a traditional view. There's a compact view. And then there's kind of an animated view. Uh, but the way it works is um, you select your region. Obviously, we're, we're already set for um, the southeast. And right now, we're in cloud cover mode. And it tells you, OK, this is for. Um, basically Wednesday night um, because it's 6 uh, a.m. universal time on Thursday. So it's basically 1 p.m. our time. And you can jump forward in time. So if we wanted to go, uh, let's look 60 hours ahead. So hopefully that will be right about time for our um, – oh, I went too far. That's probably not far enough. Um, So what it'll do is it'll keep kind of uh, moving through. You'll see um, these various uh, movements in the overall diagram. Um, he ranks them basically 90 to 100 percent cloud cover. Red is bad. Blue is good. Follows very much the same sort of color schemes uh, that you'll see in um, clear sky chart. Uh, so you can look at it uh, based upon total cloud cover. Um, you can then, you know, say, give, what about low, middle, or high? Although I've noticed, basically, if you hit total cloud, you'll get all three <laughs> put together. Uh, it'll give you a transparency um, rating as well. Um, so you're able to uh, look at that. Uh, it'll give you seeing. Um, information as far as wind speed, temperature, uh, although what I like, and I haven't seen other uh, areas do this or other sites do this, is it gives you, oops, sorry, it gives you a do risk. So um, that's nice to be able to know, okay, I better make sure I've got my battery powered up to run the dew heaters or not. Um, so pretty decent. Um, the different ways of looking at it, so that's the traditional way where you kind of jump forward and back. Um, the compact view, I'll look at the southeast again. What it does is it basically kind of puts all of the charts together. So you've got here total cloud cover, seeing, transparency, and it just kind of keeps going on the side uh, and doing. Uh, so you kind of see those four and then across then you can go down for each of the time increments. So it's kind of an all-in-one pager instead of having to flip through. Um, and then animated just basically almost does a very similar thing and just kind of moves you forward and backwards and you can adjust the speed. So it's pretty good. I've noticed that um, you know, this information can be different from what Clear Sky Clock is saying or even from what um, uh, Cal Sky is saying. So, you know, I usually like to look at different sources um, for pulling all this information together. 
um, again, sourced out of Australia. Uh, Seven Timer uh, is a Chinese version. Um, they've been having some issues with their URL. Not sure why. Uh, it is web-based. They used to have an app. I know my app it hasn't been working. There might be another app out there. Uh, it's a little bit odd. It's very, very similar to Clear Sky Clock, except that this does 72 hours instead of the 48 hours. Um, pretty much does very similar things. Uh, and what it tries to do is it, it gives you the information more in kind of pie charts. So um, in this case, you can see that uh, we've got about 25% cloud cover for uh, the, the 6th uh, at uh, 8 p.m. And it is all in local time. Um, you basically can access this data. Uh, it uses a Google Maps interface. And uh, I think I've got it up. Or maybe I don't. Um, I won't bother with it. But uh, it does use a Google Map interface. So basically, you find where you want on a map, right click, and um, you can basically select, I want my uh, uh, astro forecast. And it will give you that information. So. Um, Pretty good. I've noticed that there are a lot of apps that seem to subscribe to this weather information. Um, mobile, not mobile observatory, sorry. Um, the uh, Observer Pro subscribes to this, and I believe that, um, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, the sky quality uh, uh, reader or meter uh, does as well. Uh, Scope Nights is another uh, interesting one. Um, group out of the UK does this. Uh, I've only seen it available on the iOS platform. I haven't seen anything similar uh, in uh, the Android or other uh, platforms. Um, they do uh, update this uh, forecast pretty regularly. Um, it'll give you about 10 nights, and it's very straightforward. It'll basically say, you know, bad, fair, good, and, and so forth. Um, you can actually subscribe and get a more um, in-depth version, uh, and I believe that'll give you a little bit more information. It'll give you some maps and things like that. Um, but it was kind of a whim, 99 cents, uh, and it's pretty good. Um, you basically jump in. Um, you can see it, it'll break it down day by day, uh, and then you can click on it. And then, so in this case, uh, I just grabbed this from their website. Uh, then it'll tell you by increments uh, of time in those three-hour increments exactly uh, whether or not uh, what are the conditions going to be. So uh, the forecast has been, eh, you know, on and off. Um, it's been about as good, I think, as, as Clear Sky Clock. Uh, at least it's been my um, experience. Um, so that's all the apps that I have. Um, Questions. We've got a question in the back. Yep. How's this? Mike, have you stumbled across any websites that provide more accurate light pollution data? I have, and I almost thought about bringing it in here, although I was getting pretty full. Um, there are, I, off the top of my head, I can't remember. I think you and I have maybe even had this conversation about it. But uh, you can actually download what they call a um, Google Earth overlay. So if anyone that uses Google Earth on their uh, local machines, um, I believe it's the 2006 light pollution map. Um, and it will basically overlay the two together. Um, there is one website that, is, that has tried to pull that together. So it's a bit more interactive on the web. Uh, although I don't know exactly which is, which overlay he's using or not, and he's got some comments on his website that says he's basically run out of bandwidth and run out of time, uh, so he's not really updating it much. Hey, uh, I was a little preoccupied in the room, but uh, I don't think I ever saw you say anything about Stellarium. I mentioned it, but it's it's I think it's primarily a desktop app. And you've got oh, anyway, so you can use, I know they do have a, um, uh, an app uh, available for the um, uh, iPad uh, and I believe also the Android devices. Um, 
So, but I, I think it was primarily a, a desktop app, so I, I didn't mention it, but it is available. Software BISC just recently introduced their new app too, and I put it on my iPad. And I don't think it's as embellished as Sky Safari, but mm -hmm. it's pretty good. And they have their own controller, which appears to be a lot easier to set up than the Sky Safari's controller. The one thing I've noticed about Sky Safari, and anyone that has used it in here might be able to comment as well. You still need to have the hand controller. You need to do all your alignments with the hand controller, and then you can kind of plug it in and let it take over. Yeah. 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 I don't think there is another way. So. Oh, really? Interesting. <laughs> 